Hey everyone, welcome to the PT channel. Here to talk about some home health tools which you'll need to be successful and just some pros and cons of the job. First and foremost, the thing you're gonna need to be successful is a car. You're gonna have to be able to get around to these places. You're gonna call up the patient with your phone, make sure you set up a time for when they get there once you get the authorization through your agency. They'll usually email you or call you or whatever uh, mode of communication you like to have both. I like communication through email and phone calls. Um, so you kind of, they let us know when we have different uh, patients to see them there too and how much authorization they have too. A lot of times you'll evaluate them and you'll get two, maybe five visits at the most. You can request more authorization, but that sometimes is tough to get. So first thing you need is a car, cell phone, flexible schedule is also another thing you'll need because a lot of these patients aren't going to want to start until 9.30, 10 o'clock. Most people want to start around 11 o'clock in the morning. So you're going to see some patient for half hour, 45 minutes, and then drive to the next patient. So you're going to be, once you start your day, you like to keep rolling on there to get it all done. Now, you can see anywhere between two, three, five, six patients a day, and then you got to document. So if you have a computer or a laptop or a tablet or something, you want to use that. If you can, you're not really going to have internet connection in a lot of these people's homes. So I recommend having a, a notebook, a pen, um, to write everything down, vitals and everything there too. The other things you're going to do is you're going to have to take some vitals. So you're going to have your blood pressure cuff and some gomenometer. So make sure you get that. Gait belt, very important if you're walking these people to do that for some therapy. Very important to have gait belt safety first, educating and teaching them. Two, as you can see, I'm dressed in scrubs because I'm going to be going out pretty soon to go out and see my patients for the day. But scrubs, professional attire, khakis, polo, nice dress shirt, very important to have. Skilled nursing sees the patient first. So they see the, the patient set the tone for what's going to be done there to get some vitals, some baseline measures. So they usually wear scrubs or something comfortable there too. So I like to see like we're part of the team and it's from the same agency. So I wear scrubs because they're really comfortable. It's easy to get out and about. You don't have to worry about what you're going to have to wear. Um, get out there too, so wear the same dress attire as the company, nursing, skilled nursing, speech, OT, home health aides, whatever they have, kind of be on the same page. Now, the big thing is to have a professional attire, professional, you know, attitude with your patients. Now, you're in their element and their realm, but that doesn't stop you from being a professional at the work as best you can. Education, home exercise programs, a lot of walking, gait training, endurance, lower extremity strengthening, just working on your endurance and fatigue. A lot of these people are out of, you know, out of shape, out of abnormal gait, muscle weakness, or just in deconditioning on there too. So you want to work with them as the best comfortable manner that they can. Give them a home exercise program right away. Make sure they get it to understand safely and effectively what they're doing. Doing some gait training, some education, some some exercises with them, and that's really what you do. Now you see a lot of patients um, in a day if you can. That can be a pro or a con. Now the pros are you see a lot of patients and you get paid pretty well if you're a full-time person or you're a pretty busy clinic or a pretty, pretty busy agency. Now you can see anywhere between you know two patients a day, six patients a day, it's up to you if you have, have the ability to do that. I like to see a lot of patients if we can stay busy. Um, you can, an eval sometimes get paid a little bit more in the different agencies. Um, my company gets a little, you get a little bit more for an eval than you do that. It's about 10 bucks more than a regular treat. And that range is going to be anywhere between 55 to $75 for an eval and a treatment. So anywhere between that, a lot of agencies pay it. So some companies pay for uh, travel uh, reimbursement through mileage. My company doesn't. So I keep a log of my mileage on here to pay on your taxes in your notebook. Very important to have a notebook, write everything down. Just don't put any patient... Uh, modifier or um, modifications on there so you know who they are. You don't want to have any patient identifiers. Sorry, sorry to say it. Um, patient identifiers you cannot have is unacceptable. So very important to have that. Um, just have your uh, tools of the trade here. Another thing is good to have that I ordered more on Amazon. It's not here yet, but it's a pulse ox, pulse oximeter. It goes on the finger. It looks at pulse and O2 saturation. If someone's wearing nail polish, they might not have a good reading on there too, but it's something that you can do that. Take a pulse on their wrist this is the normal way to do it. Check their blood pressure, their vitals, respiratory rate. Check that every time you see them, make sure they're okay and they're fit to do the exercises for the day. 
So that's just some pros and cons and some tools of the trade for home health. Um, try it out a little bit. It's actually a little better than you think. Some people gets a bad rap, but it's a good flexibility. Your schedule is pretty good. The pay is very well. And you can do a lot of different things. You can also work part-time or full-time, whatever. You kind of be for flexible in your schedule, which is always nice. So as always, like, share, subscribe, um, comment, post questions. We'll check it every day. And as always, thank you guys.